Hi, Catherine here with Circle Art Designs. Today on the mat, I will be working on project four from the Jesse Jane Design by Me Lavender Mix. These are the last of the beads from this mix, and I thought I would do three pairs of earrings. So let's make earrings. Shall we turn our eyes to the mat? So as I turn my eyes to the mat, I'm reminded to give thanks to the Lord. And as I was thinking about that this morning, I was reminded of our newest little dog. He was a street dog. And as far as I can tell, he had been a street dog all of his life. And having him learn trust, especially trust in us, has been a long haul but this week, as I have been going down the hall to greet him in the mornings, he has started jumping up on the back of the couch and wagging his tail and wanting me to give him pets before we go for morning breakfast. I think my Heavenly Father is like that. He reaches out to us in so many ways. And we're like our little dog and we run from him and we're afraid and, and we don't know what's going to happen. But he just keeps on sending out his love. Until one day, we learn to trust. It's amazing seeing that in our little dog. So what do you have to be thankful for today? All right, let's get started. So, for my own stash, I have pulled these matte garnet glass rondelles with a B-flash. And I'm going to use those with this earring. And then, from the Jesse James, we have these lovely acrylic flower discs. These are gorgeous. They're, and we're going to make some beautiful earrings with them. We're also going to need, if I quit playing with it for a minute, some eye pins. These are three inch eye pins. And I'm going to use the Cat on the Moon, um, I'm sorry, charm. And we'll need some lever backs. All three of these earrings will be very simple earrings to do, but they're beautiful. Now, the other thing that I did not tell you is I have those faceted barrel bead, crystal barrel beads in a four millimeter. I'm putting on one of those and then one of the glass garnet matte finish. And then I'm putting on the disc from the Jesse James. And now I'm trying to decide which one of these do I want for my top bead. So I'm going to start out and put on that faceted barrel bead crystal in the, it's in a flash. And then we're also going to try that matte garnet glass. I love that too. And um, I think that's the one I'm going to go ahead and go with. I like having choices whenever I'm designing, especially whenever, although I've drawn out what I want to do, I'm not sure which beads I'm going to use. So we're going to take this and we're going to take the looper. And this will not go all the way across, but just make sure that bead touches up against the side of the looper. Once you do that, go ahead and mash your handles together. And you have got yourself at least the beginnings of a loop. Then I take my straight nose pliers and I'm going to go ahead and twist that wire all the way down till it touches the other wire so the loop is closed and then I'm going to take these and straighten out that loop make sure both loops are in the on the same plane if you want them vertical make sure they're both vertical horizontal make sure they're both horizontal so that they'll hang correctly then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some jump rings I have decided for this one that I am going to use my four millimeter and 
And then I'm thinking, well, do I want a different one for the top? And I think I will. I think I'll pull out the four millimeter and the six millimeter. And so that's what I'm pulling out to put these earrings together. Now, when you do earrings and you're using jump rings, go ahead, use two chain nose pliers or a chain and a curve, hold it between them and twist one side. Then I put on my charm, then I put on my component, and then I'm going to twist one side again, bring it together, touch the top, make sure that there's no rough edges. If there's a rough edge, you don't have it closed properly. So that's what I'm doing here. I said, oh, and I threw it onto the table. But there it is. It's closed, and the dangle part is together. Isn't that a cute kitty in the moon? I just love this earring. I think it's very whimsical. So again, now we're using the bigger one. This is the six millimeter. I'm opening up between two of the chain nose pliers. I'm putting on my component and then I will put on my uh, lever back ear wire. Now when you're putting on an earring, make sure that you know which sides you want to be the front and put front sides of your component with the front side of your ear wire. Now this is a tricky one and I had to decide what I wanted to do. For the kitty, and we're going to go ahead and do the other one off camera, but for the kitty, one side the kitty's tail is hanging across the moon and on the other side the kitty's tail is hanging behind it. So you really have to decide do you want them to face each other or do you want them to face the same direction? And that is really up to you. I made them face the same direction because I liked the kitty tail showing. And here you can see them facing each other with one tail over the moon and one tail behind the moon. I think that these big old flower discs with that pearl shine to them looks like a flower moon and that's probably what I'm going to put these up and in as the name for these okay that made that didn't make sense okay that's probably what I, the name I'm going to use when I put them in the shop kitties and the flower moon because I love these. My kitty charms came from Amazon. Last time I looked, they were still up. Just Google uh, kitties or cat in the moon and you get all kinds of charms. But I picked these up last year. And I, I the thing with Amazon is you get lots of them. And so I've used them before. Actually, I used them around Halloween. Now see what I mean? This is facing each other. I chose to go ahead and have them face the same side. Now, on to our next pair of earrings. This will start with the lavender pink 5 millimeter glass balls from the Jesse James Mix and the matching barrel beads in that lavender pink. Aren't those gorgeous? Then added to that, we're going to take from my own stash these beautiful little four millimeter lavender and these are kind of a copper flash that ha that is on them. And also from my own stash, we're going to need some eye pins and those are gold plated and the gold plated head pins. Then I'm also going to use a couple, I touched them but I didn't pick them up. A couple of the three millimeter spacer balls, some large bead caps in the five millimeter, and some smaller bead caps. Some of them I'm going to use for the barrel bead, the smaller ones I'm going to use for the little round. The from the Jesse James mix, those are both glass. So I'm starting off with one of the lavender uh, faceted beads from my own stash. A, a bead cap and then the barrel bead from the Jesse James mix and another of the larger of the bead caps. This is going to be a classic 
dangle earring. I love the classic, that old, you know, that has been around forever, classic look of dangles. So let's do that again. We have the small lavender. We have the head, the bead cap, the barrel bead, another bead cap, and the tid bead in the lavender. These are a kind of a barrel bead look to them. They are not round per se. And those are ready to go. So then first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our looper. This has a longer head, oh, I'm sorry, a longer uh, piece left over that isn't beaded. We put it across the looper. We go ahead and make sure the bead is touching, just like that. Mash the handles and take it out and you have a one ready to turn. I'm sorry guys, I'm suffering from a slight migraine today. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our straight nose pliers and we're going to go ahead and take that loop and make sure that it is closed. Now when you're closing your loop, don't worry if it runs over to the side because you can take your pliers just like this, straighten it up, and once that loop is closed, then you can gently push it back over the center so that they come right over the top of the bead. Always make sure they come over the top of the bead so that the dangle will swing right. Now for the next section, I'm straightening out these little eye pins. I'm going to start again with one of those faceted lavender barrel beads. And I'm using the smaller bead cap for this. Then the beautiful little five millimeter lavender pink and an another bead cap. I almost forgot the second bead cap. And then we're going to put on and finish that component with the lavender faceted bead. And let's do it again. Lavender faceted bead. Then the little bitty bead cap, and I bought these at a bead show, but I'm sure you can find them in a lot of places. Another of the small bead caps, and the lavender faceted barrel bead. Okay, into the looper, make sure the bead touches, go ahead and mash the handles, and it cuts that wire and makes a loop. Let's do it one more time. Make sure it touches, go ahead and mash the handles and you've got it ready to close. Taking my straight nose pliers, I am making sure that both sides are closed, doing some last minute adjustments on them and they're ready to go together. We're also using the lever back with these and I'm gonna use the round jump rings. I like to use the oval, but here lately, I've been using a lot of the round. I'm going to go ahead and pull the four millimeter for these. And let's see. Do I want to use another size? I think the four millimeter. Mm, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and use the four millimeter exclusively on this one. I've opened up the jump ring. I am putting on my component first, making sure that both ends are hanging in the same plane. Same thing here, you want them to hang in the same plane so that when they dangle, they will move together. This is called a two-step dangle. And when you do a two-step dangle, you have given an extra um, area where it can have movement. A lot of times you see where the top bead has been glued or, or mounted in some way onto the ear wire itself, and that's a lovely look, but it only gives you one area for movement then. I like the two-step because I like to have the extra swing that you get from having two components instead of one. Again, I opened up my jump ring. I put on the bottom component, the top component, and my lever back to finish this earring out. These earrings, it, you don't have to have a front and a back because 
they're the same all the way around. And that are, I just need to get the um, ear wire on and that one will be finished. Now what I was doing while I took a break, I went, okay, do I really like that size jump ring? And that's something you should do when you finish your project or the first part of it, go ahead and see, do you like that? Now's the time to change it. And, but I did, I really like the smaller jump rings. The other thing that I know I've said before, but make sure you put your components on in the same, um, in the same way each time. If you put the bottom component on first, put the bottom component on the next time. If you put your earring back on last, put it on last the next time. That makes sure they're in the same space on that jump ring. Aren't those lovely? I just love these classic looks. And here they are. They have just a beautiful swing on them. Won't that give a lovely pink flash right at your face? Uh, you know, when you wear beautiful earrings, you don't even have to have makeup whenever you go out. Okay, on to our last pair of earrings. On the mat, you're going to see the amethyst round beads and some eye pins in a 2.5 inch. Then these beautiful teardrops, these faceted teardrops are from the Jesse James mix. Then I've pulled some crystal flash and purple uh, barrel beads for this. And I also have some uh, head pins. Now we're starting off with a two millimeter spacer ball. If I can get them all gathered back up, they kind of rolled all over the mat. All right, the spacer ball goes on. Then we're going to do our bead cap for the bottom of this beautiful drop. These are just gorgeous. Now I might use the amethyst here, but I like things that stay in proportion. So I'm going to go ahead and use this purple flash that I have, barrel bead, it's gorgeous. It's a faceted, small, probably about a four millimeter, and it just continues the point going towards the top of the teardrop. Then I'm gonna put on another one of the silver spacer balls, because I started with one and I want to end with one. I'm going to make sure my eye pin is facing in the same plane when I use my loopers. Put that bead right up against the edge, mash it, turn it down a little bit. The reason you turn it down is it makes kind of a question mark and it makes it easier for you to get that loop over the top of your bead. And remember, in the previous one, I said you always want that loop to be in the center of your bead because if it runs to one side, your component will hang crooked. And there's that finished part. Poor black. <laughs> Sorry. And there's the finished component. Isn't that lovely? All right. So let's put another one together real quick. Again, I'm going, am I out of... There we go. So again, we're going to put on the spacer ball, the bead cap, the drop. Then we're going to go with another one of those faceted purple barrel flash, flash purple barrel beads. And then another of the silver spacer balls. Put it in the loop. Go ahead, make sure that you're in the same plane and close that loop. Now, if you're not in the same plane, because sometimes I get in a hurry and I forget, you can always twist this between two chain nose pliers till you get it in the same plane. Now, I have the components ready to go, but remember I put them on eye pins, so this too is going to be a two-step dangle. I'm putting them on the 24 uh, gauge head pins. It will have one of the amethyst glass and it will have a spacer ball at the bottom and top. And this time we're going to do a turn. To do a turn, you take small motions and you're coiling that wire around the straight nose pliers until it touches your bead. 
Again, let's do that again. On will go our spacer ball once I get this straight enough to use. The 24 gauge is easily bent. And then you're going to put on the amethyst glass another one of the spacer balls, taking your straight nose pliers, holding it at the tip so nothing is sticking out. That's what I was making sure. You coil it around your straight nose pliers till it touches your bead. This makes a very secure loop to join to the bottom of your dangles. Now the next component for this will be some closed frames. This also comes from my stash. I got it off of Amazon and I really love these closed frames. They are in the silver. They've been antiqued a little so that you can see the design. I'm going to take a four millimeter jump ring, open it with two, tw two chain nose pliers, twist, please don't pull twist remember any if you never remember anything else twist 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 so i put on my component then i put on the closed frame loop and then i'm going to do another one and this one i'm going to pull a size up because mm, there we go you know what, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the four millimeter. All right, let's use the four millimeter for this because I don't want the, the jump ring to take away from that beautiful frame I'm using for one of the components. So I'm opening up, putting on the amethyst glass onto the bottom of the component. So we just joined together and so it will be frame, component, amethyst glass. And we're going to do the same thing by opening up that head pin, putting now putting on the four millimeter onto the frame and then making sure it's in the front, we put on our lever back. Now really there's no right way or wrong way on this particular earring to put the lever back on. But remember you want just like in sewing, right sides together. And I, that is the way this will hang. Let's go ahead and do this one more time, because we have time. <laughs> Usually I'm going, oh my gosh, it's 45 minutes, and I'm running out of space, and I've already sped it up. <laughs> but we're twisting that, we're opening it up, we're putting on our component, then we're going to put on our frame we're closing that making sure it's closed by touching it that there's no rough spots and look at that i didn't put the it doesn't matter for this part open up the chain i mean the jump ring put your component on go ahead and put your amethyst glass dangle close it up just like that and now it's time to put on the lever back. Again, that four millimeter. The smaller the jump ring, the less likely it's to take away from the design. But there are times when you want that jump ring to be part of the design. And if there is room in the circle I am working with, I have used two and three at a time to give it a more dramatic look. But for this one, we're just using the little four millimeter dangles. And there is another classic two-step. Actually, this would be considered a three-step dangle because of the frame, the teardrop component, and then the amethyst glass at the bottom. This will have a beautiful swing. And I will add pictures at the back so let's start with the kitty moons. I love these big flower moons. And it, would you take a moment and like and leave a comment if you haven't already. And please subscribe to our channel and help us grow. And if you would share, that would help even more. Thank you so much. These lovely earrings will be up in the shop. 
I'm hoping by the time you get to see this, but probably not till tomorrow. It involves turning on the lights. Um, thank you so much for joining me on this speeding adventure today. I have had such a good time, even with a headache. And part of the reason is I love sharing. I love laughing. I love telling stories. And I love joining you and you allowing me to be a part of your day. God bless y'all. Have an amazing beating adventure of your own. And I'll see you later in the week. Bye now. God bless. Catherine, circleartdesigns.net